Tonight's top story. French President Nicolas Sarkozy and German Chancellor Angela Merkel meet as pressure mounts to agree proposals to save the euro before a key summit on Friday. Italy and Ireland are introducing new austerity measures to kick-start their faltering economies. Also on tonight's show, millions of public sector workers are on strike after changes to their pension plans. Elections for a new parliament have started today in Egypt. We take a look into the services provided by one of Britain's largest couriers. And in sport, Wales manager Gary Speed has been found dead after committing suicide. Good evening and welcome to the UCA News at Six. I'm Katie Williamson and here is more on tonight's top story. The French President Nicolas Sarkozy and German Chancellor Angela Merkel are holding crisis talks to avoid the collapse of the euro. Our European correspondent Edward Harath has more. Mr Sarkozy welcomed Mrs Merkel and a French president's Elysee Palace in Paris for a working lunch. The two leaders posed for the cameras but made no comment. The Franco-German meeting in Paris kicks off a week of meetings involving European leaders, culminating in Brussels on Friday with an EU summit. Germany favours strict central control, whilst France wishes to preserve more national sovereignty. The proposals made are being seen as crucial for the survival of the single currency. Meanwhile, two badly hit Eurozone countries, Italy and Ireland, are preparing tighter austerity measures. In Italy, pension ages are set to rise and the severity of the reforms caused Welfare Minister Elsa Fonero to break down in tears. That's what we've had to do and this has cost us psychologically. We have had to ask for sac Despite this, the Italian Prime Minister Mario Monti pressed ahead with his 30 billion euro package of austerity measures. Across the continent, in Ireland, the Irish Prime Minister Enda Kenny made the first televised address to the nation in 24 years and warned of tough economic times ahead. Good evening. Tonight I'm taking the opportunity to speak to you directly on the challenge we face as a community, as an economy and as a country. I know this is an exceptional event, but we live in exceptional times and we face an exceptional challenge. Public spending will be cut by 2.2 billion euros a year and taxes raised by 1.5 billion euros, with VAT increasing to 23%. With the stakes remaining high, politicians across Europe will be hoping for solidarity and an effective agreement on Friday. Edward Herreth, UCA News. Today, millions of people across the UK have gone on strike. This comes after changes to the public pension. Our industrial correspondent Chantel Groshop has more. Today will mark the biggest strike in this generation, as over 20 million public sector workers have walked out. 30 unions are participating, bringing most of Britain to a chaotic standstill. What they want? Fair pensions for all. I went out today in Farnham to find out more on this story. Schools, offices, airports and even government offices are being affected, with demonstrations taking place across the country. The government has urged more talks, saying the strike will not accomplish anything. However, the unions believe they need to take a stand. George Osborne said, the strike is not going to achieve anything. It's not going to change anything. Britain has to live within its means. In opposition, Ed Miliband attacks the current government and says, I'm afraid the government has to accept responsibility. It is their failure that have led to the strikes today. In Farnham, Surrey, the University for the Creative Arts was partially closed as some lecturers took part in the strike. Today, UCU members across the country are striking uh, along with their colleagues in other public sector unions. Around 3 million workers are on strike uh, in support of their uh, pension schemes and against the government's uh, spending cuts. The problem is there is not enough money to support the current pension rates. Therefore, the government says that public sector workers need to work longer, pay more and get less when they retire. People working in the public sector say the new scheme is unfair since most people will probably lose out. The government believes, however, the offer is generous and much more than people in the private sector could hope for. For UCA, this is Chantal Groshop in Farnham. Here with me live is Chantal covering the strike. 
Good evening, Chantel. Tell us what's been going on in Farnham. Well, as you can see, a couple of people are protesting, generally um, lectures from the local university. The local hospital is also partially open now. What other disruptions have been going on in the UK? Well, across Britain, around 60% of the schools are now closed. Some are as well partially opened. And also in Heathrow, it's not seeing as many disruptions as were planned. Thanks, Chantel. We'll have more on that story in our 10 o'clock news. But now in international news, parliamentary elections will enter a second day in Egypt. Fears of more violence in the country have ceased after a peaceful vote on the first day of the poll. A record number of women have shown determination to vote, with many of them queuing for up to eight hours in Cairo's neighbouring district, Thamalek. I think it's an important step and to see so many women just walk out and just stand for seven and eight hours and determine they're not going to leave, they are going to vote because the longer they stayed and the more problems we had inside, the more determined people were to stay and vote and that, I think that is fantastic. The election comes after days of protests in the country killing 42 people and injuring many others. Hundreds of Pakistanis took to the streets to show their anger over the NATO cross-border attack that left 24 dead. Pakistan has warned it could end support for the US-led war on militancy if its national borders are violated again. People on the street said that they supported the action. Now, online shopping has become more and more popular in Britain, especially around Christmas time. But how can you be sure that your order will arrive on time or even arrive at all? Our correspondent Holly Moore takes a closer look. Everyone knows that if you want something to be delivered before Christmas, you have to order it online in plenty of time. However, no one expects to be waiting for over a month for their parcel to arrive, and that's if you're lucky. It's becoming more and more common for customers to not receive their parcel at all. Parcel Force is one of Britain's leading courier services and is a trading name of the Royal Mail Group. It's often been criticised for its failure to deliver parcels and their contents safely. I decided to look into these claims further and do some investigating of my own. I ordered something off of one of Britain's leading online fashion stores using next day delivery. To my surprise, when I came home after work the next day, my purchase had not arrived. This was not my most shocking discovery, though. I used Parcel Force's online tracker, and apparently my parcel had been delivered and, furthermore, had been signed for. There was proof of delivery, however the signature used was not my own or anyone else in my house. In fact, it appeared to be just a scribble. So who signed for it and where is my parcel? This is not uncommon for Parcel Force and many people have experienced the same problem. One customer said Parcel Force did not accept that a mistake was made. I would never use them again. Another said Parcel Force is probably the worst company I have ever dealt with. Another review said, in my opinion, Parcel Force is the worst run parcel service in the UK by far. I rang Parcel Force for an explanation on what had happened and what they planned to do about it. After being on hold for 10 minutes, I was told that this was not a problem they could solve and they were only the courier service. When I asked about the fake signature, they refused to comment and said that their driver would have had good reason to do this. Parcel Force have won awards in the past for health and safety in information technology. Maybe it's about time they put their customer first and improve the service that they are first and foremost used for. Holly Moore in Farnham for UCA News. That's all for your news. It's now over to Chantel Groshop with all of the sport. Chantel. Thank you, Katie. Wales manager Gary Speed has been found dead after committing suicide. Our football correspondent, Tom Simpson, gives us the full story. A normal man and a great player were among the most common tributes paid to Wales manager Gary Speed, who took his own life on Sunday. He is the most capped Welsh outfield player ever, appearing 85 times for his country, and is also third on the all-time Premier League appearance list, playing 535 times. A minute's silence turned into a minute's applause at the Liberty Stadium, where Swansea took on Aston Villa on Sunday, and the emotion of the occasion was profound, with former Newcastle teammate Shay Given breaking down in tears. Former Wales manager Bobby Gould paid tribute to his former captain. He was my captain of Wales. He, 
he do anything for you. He, he turned Welsh football round. He'd had a wonderful career. He got a lovely wife and two sons, and and, and he just keep. I just keep shivering and shivering and shivering and thinking, what what has gone on? On Saturday morning, he made his last public appearance on BBC's Football Focus, seemingly in good spirits. Thinking this season might be a sort of a bit part played, come in, win Ferdinand and, and Vidic are injured or whatever, but he's, he's played more than probably he expected or anyone suspected. Speed leaves behind a wife and two children, and the football world will continue to mourn one of the game's most popular figures. In football, Manchester United were left stunned after Crystal Palace dumped them out of the Carling Cup. Fans were left speechless as Palace took the lead in the second half. United tried to get it back and managed to level the score with a penalty by Federico Makelda. But Palace were on top form and upped their game to take the final score to 2-1. United manager Sir Alex Ferguson was unimpressed with his team's performance, while Palace's boss, Dougie Friedman, said it took hard work for a side to win. So disappointed, I have to apologise to my fans and all the players who weren't playing. It was, uh, we never expected that. Well, you know, when you come to Old Trafford, you know, you, you, you really got to sort of give everything you've got, and the lads have done that. Darren Ambrose was undoubtedly the star of the match after scoring this superb goal, putting Palace on the road to success. He later sent Glett Murray up with a lovely free kick, giving Palace the win. Now in boxing, Vitaly Klitschko's management team have confirmed they have made an offer to David Hay for a clash in March. Klitschko spoke after a match last month and said that he wanted to knock out Hay. You know what, it's, uh, we, he stretched out and he touched me, my brother, personally. I want to knock him out. I'm serious. I'm, I want to knock David Hay out and I can do that. David Hay has confirmed that his teams are in talks but said it is early days and nothing has been planned yet. This comes after the Brits' retirement following its defeat by Vitaly's brother, Vladimir Klitschko. The words out that um, our people are talking to uh, Vitaly Klitschko's people about a potential fight, when that'll be, who knows. But it's just talk at the moment. I am retired, and the only, I said I will come out of retirement if you know, uh, we can work something like Vitaly Klitschko. If not, then I'll, I'll stay retired. I'm taking it easy over Christmas and New Year, and we'll look into, into January at some stage. Stay in shape. And just yeah, yeah, yeah sure. just stay in shape, stay healthy, eat clean. And uh, if it happens, it does. If it doesn't, then, you know. And now in golf, Tiger Woods won his first tournament for over two years on Sunday, claiming a victory in the Chevron Challenge Cup. The 14-time major winner finished on 10 under par, despite being one shot behind the fellow American, Zach Johnson, with only two holes to play. This is the first time Woods has won a tournament since allegations over his private life emerged in 2009. Well, that's all your latest sports. Now back to you, Katie. Katie? Thanks, Chantelle. That's all we have time for this evening. Holly Moore will be back later with your news at 10. Bye-bye. Good evening. The band of rain that has been spreading across the west of the country will turn heavy as we get into tonight, with the west of Scotland seeing the worst of the weather. It will remain dry and clear in the east, turning frosty as we get into the early hours of tomorrow morning. The clear skies in the east mean that the temperature will drop considerably, with lows of five in eastern parts and four in the north and west of the country. Tomorrow morning, you'll definitely need your diaster as we'll be waking up to a very frosty scene. As we move through the morning, the rain in western parts remains persistent and will move across central England. There is a chance of floods in the west of Scotland and the Met Office has put up a weather warning. It will feel a lot colder than it has over the past few days with highs of six or seven. The wet weather looks set to stay for the rest of the week with the risk of heavy storms and maybe even some snow showers in the north. 
That's all for your weather. Goodbye.